He woke you up this morning. He's got good things in store. You know, this morning uh, we have two more uh, two more uh, Sunday mornings in the series we've started it this year uh, called uh, House in Order. This really was out of something that came um, in the in end of last year in the fall that this house would come in order. That this year there would be a house coming into order, and that means not just this house, the house of God. But your house, my house. And so we started this year very intentional uh, out of some things that the Lord laid on my heart about getting us back, maybe to some foundational things, back to the truth of, and the, the promise, hey, good morning, uh, of God's plans uh, for you. And uh, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> He's, that's so funny. That's awesome. All right. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't, you got me all messed up now. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, I got a friend in the front row, and uh, that's not usually where I look up and see him. So I was like, hey, all right, praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't know why, but that tickled me really funny. It's like, beam, he just beamed in, like spawned in right there. Um, <laughs> praise the Lord. It's good to laugh in church. All right. So we're in this house in order, in, and as much as it is this... Um, this it came as a, as a note of that's very serious because of the the gifts and the callings and the plans and the purposes of God to be fulfilled in you and in your family and here on the earth that God knew you before you were born He appointed you and He set you here in this time and and so there's a gift and a call but uh, for you but there's also a corporate calling. There's also a corporate calling. There's, all, there's, a, there's, a, there's a how you fit together with me and how I fit together with you and how you fit together with the one left and right and in the back corner and, and the, the guy in the front row. We, we fit, there's, a, there's a fitting together. And so as much as it is you get your house in order, it's about his house, it's about his plan, it's about what he's doing here on the earth, getting back out plan A, getting back out the, these things, being about his business, the right things, and how even in um, last week. We were talking about even in this nation, the, the destruction of a nation is not from the outside in. It's, it would be from the inside out. And we were talking about how there's chaos and, and, and confusion and just so many different words that breed distrust uh, in, in authority. In authority, and so those words they can cause you and me to uh, to, to to be about all, and hearing all this different noise, and it's, we struggle to hear how God would lead us. The Bible says that, that a child of God is led by the Spirit of God inside. The Bible says that our spirit is like a candle of the Lord. It's how he leads us. It's not like the torch. Like, uh, I don't know if you're ever looking, you know, like you get that light. I mean a torch as in like a, a bright flashlight. It's a candle. Have you ever tried to walk through the house with a candle? Maybe the communion service, uh, Christmas Eve, you know, when you light that and you go into the next one. How many of you know it? you can't just... Whoosh, what happens when you do that? It goes out, doesn't it? And you got to get it relit. You got to pause long enough to light it again. And that's how, really, just that awareness, that tenderness, that stillness to walk with the Lord, just an awareness of, of with Him. And so we were talking about how so so many times, too many words, other words other than the Lord's word, um, uh, or what He would say about a matter, can cause care and concern and fear and all kinds of chaos. You're for me. You're against me. Warring from within. And that's not God's best. That's not God's plan. And we, we talked about and said, hold on to and bring forth and use and keep the word of God, which is sharp, which is powerful, which is able to, 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 to fend off and war against these words. But it's also to bring us correction and direction and, and light and, and show us in which way to go and which not to go. Right? How many of you know um, a, a YouTube video could direct your and my heart or, or plan a word and direct your and my heart for tomorrow really easily? Yeah. It just it can happen. And it's, it's not uh, that that's wrong and that's wrong. It's just so many times you can look at the word that comes to you and see the fruit and recognize its author. So if the fruit of that word, because the Bible talks about how every word is a seed. Yeah. It's a seed and the seed will produce fruit. And so if that seed or that word produces fear and turmoil or even just self, let me say this, self, uh, self-sustaining. That's not God. Yeah. <laughs> to be self-sustained, where is that found? Didn't he tell us that we're to be dependent upon him? Yeah. This is why we want to win the lottery, because we want to be self-sufficient. And I, I, you're not alone in wishing you knew the Powerball numbers. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, oh, Lord, just once. 
I could do such great good for your kingdom. Buy a big deer lease for my friends. Give to your kingdom. But there's something about where we just don't want to have to be dependent. And so we were talking about just really bringing God, God bringing, uh, you know, being a part of what God's doing here on this earth. Your part, my part, our part. And so this morning, um, and again, turning down the volume of some of the other voices and the other, the other noise and getting back to, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? So that we're not idle. Because we looked at that last week. All these extra words, they actually produce idleness about God's direction. Now, they, you, you'll build a greenhouse, Right? You'll build a bomb shelter, but, but what God is wanting you to do, right, that's where the idleness is produced. And so we need to be about what God is doing. And so this morning, we're going to, this, this title, this message is this, His Plan, My Part. So have you ever wondered what your part is in the, His plan in this earth right now? I have a part to play. You have a part to play. And it sounds, it, it's going to almost sound so simple, but, um, but, it's, but it's what you and I it's not simple. It's going to have to be by faith. It's, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to make a conscious effort to be about this every day. And it's this one little word called love. Did you know love is a verb? It's an action. To walk in love is it's an action. So let's, let's, we're, going to get, uh, we're going to just start off this morning, 1 Corinthians 13. One through three. And I want you to see how powerful and how great love is. It says this. It says, if I speak in the tongue uh, of, of men and angels, but I don't have love, I'm just a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, but I don't have love, uh, he says, <clears throat> uh, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, guess what I have? Guess what I have? Nothing. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. So sometimes we want like this ultra spiritual endowment. Like I just believe God wants me to prophesy and I'm just asking the Lord to prophesy. We should really be seeking to walk in love more than we should see, be seeking to have a word of the Lord for somebody or a, a word of knowledge or anything along those lines more than I should be wishing I could, you know, uh, uh, ascend to some spiritual status. He says love is the, is the top. He says, otherwise you're nothing. Verse 3, if I give all my possessions to the poor and, and give over my body uh, to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. In other words, uh, if I'm doing it for me, hey, look at me. When you give with the right hand, don't let the left hand know what, what's going on. He's saying love is the ultimate thing. And so then we go into verse 4. It says love is. So we're going to do, it doesn't say love tries. It says love is. And so there, it, it is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Uh, love, it doesn't envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Uh, love doesn't delight in evil. Uh, it always hopes. It always perseveres. Uh, <clears throat> love rejoices in the truth. does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. When we look at these things, it's so easy to read over it, but... Is it easy to count a suffered wrong? Is it easy? Uh, I mean, for me, it, maybe, it, maybe I'm not the only one that it's easy to count a suffered wrong. Like you actually have to, by faith, or in other words, by taking God at his word, this is what it looks like, I'm going to do what God's word says. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So to, to walk by faith, I'm going to have to take and I'm going to put to work being patient. I'm going to have to let love work in me. I'm going to have to let love work in me. Uh, not easily angered. Keeps no record of wrongs. It's easy to keep a record. You remember last time? So because the last time, then th now you're, you and I are focused on what's going to happen this time. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we get. And, and so this is, again, this, the title of this morning's message is His Plan, My Part. And it really is love. We're going to keep, keep going here. Verse, let's go back to verse 7. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Doesn't quit. You just get tired of it sometimes. You know, this is what we say. I'm just tired of it. Guess what you're going to be? Tired of it. I just, I just, I don't have hope. I, I just, I just, I, this is my part. This is one of the hardest parts you're ever going to play. And it's not acting. 
It's yielding. It's not acting, it's yielding. Verse, uh, verse 8, it says, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they're going to cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is part in part disappears. He says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away... Uh, the, put the ways of childhood behind me. Again, verse 12, I want to really highlight on this part right now. It says, for right now, we see only reflection as in a mirror. Have you ever just tried to see, like, maybe the mirror's fogged up and you're, you can't really shave? You, you, how many of you know you need to get the fog off the mirror if you're going to shave, if, if you're trying to actually not just shave clean? You're going to have to, otherwise you're only seeing in part and you might make a mistake. Could you, could, could you and I have passed judgment on something that was just by mistake because you only knew part? Anybody here? Anybody? Yeah, thank you. I, 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 I've done that with my wife. I've done that with my spouse. I've done, I've done that. I just knew a part. And because I saw a part, I called it something else. You know, I, I, there's been times that I, sh- I, 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 I harvested the wrong animal because I only saw part. I remember uh, Pastor Ben, uh, he, he, I had, there was this really big eight point. I was coming down my driveway, and I, there he was. So I kept on going, and I shut it down. It was during muzzleloader season, and I shut the truck down. I got out, snuck out, put a cap on, and I snuck back, and I saw the legs of the deer, and I got down on my knee. I could see the horns, and, or, or at least one of them. It was through a sick, thick cedar bush area, and I'm like, right there. Bam! Well, I had to be somewhere, and so I, I shot the deer, and I left, and I, I had to be at a, a birthday party, and so I come back, and I'm like, I, I shot him, I shot him, I got the big eight, I got the big eight, and he's, uh, Ben was like, you did? He's like, no, I'm like, I'm serious, he's laying right beside the driveway, just 30 yards in, he's like, I'll go get him for you, I'm like, okay, go get him. He calls me, and he said, uh, big eight point? <laughs> I said, don't be jealous. You jelly, huh? You jelly. He said, "No, this ain't no eight point." I said, "I said, yeah, it's a big eight point, the big eight, the big, the big tall eight. And he said, "No, it's a big tall spike." <laughs> now there was a three point rule at this time. There was a three point rule, uh, and and I shot a, about a, I don't know, I, his, he was a good eleven inch spike. Just too big, old long. I saw a long time. I thought it was him through the trees. And when I would, had driven down, the eight point was there, but he was with the other one. It was kind of still early. They were still bachelor grouped up. I saw him part. And I made a lethal decision. I made the wrong decision. I made a decision that could have put me in some really serious trouble. Might still could. <laughs> You know, but when we know in part, we make decisions like we see the whole. We make decisions of pulling the trigger on things. We make decisions that are the wrong decision, but we, we're, we're convinced that you said that to me, like, hey, what's for dinner? Because I didn't have anything ready for dinner. Now, I just was wondering if we were, you wanted to go out because I knew it's been a long day. But instead, it's, ah! Or whatever it could be. Now, this was not, that wasn't a, a true story. I'm saying, like, I'm just giving an analogy here. Or, you know, hey, can we, could we, could we, you know, uh, hang out tonight? Well, you, don't we not ever hang out any night? Well, no, I just was saying, could we hang out tonight? We know in part, we see in part. It says, uh, then we shall, but right now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall, uh, now I know in part, then I shall uh, know fully, even as I am fully known. Verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So I know in part, I know in part, but I know my part. You might know in part right now. You might only see this much. You know in part, but can I tell you, you know your part. What's your part? To walk in love. That's your part. That's my part. You might only know this much, 
And if it was the story that I think it is, but even if it is the story that you got up in your mind, your part is not punish. Your part is, what is it? Love. His plan, my part. We're going to see how, how integral or and how important your part is to his plan. When you and I don't walk in the love of God that, he, that he's designed and he told us that this is how we're to be working, this is how there's to be a flow, it's how faith works, it's how pro, all these things, all of God is glorified, edified, like on the earth God's plan is brought about. It is by love. It doesn't fail. Yeah, but if I love, they're just going to think that they can do that again. Okay, where, where was that found? What was that scripture again? Because it never, love never, somebody say it with me. Yes. Except when, no, love never fails. So I lo- you could say it this way, I love my part. <laughs> I love my part. My part's love, but I love my part. Dude, sometimes we hate walking in love. I hate having to walk in love. You know, I want to give back. I want, I want them to suffer like I suffered. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, it's crazy is how we never say that about ourselves. I want to suffer the way I should suffer for what I did when I missed it. And when I, we never talk that way. So my part, even though I only know in part, I know my part. I know in part, but I know my part, and that's to walk in love. Let's look at here real quick, James chapter 3, verse 2. It says, we all stumble, not, not just you, not just her, not just them. It says, we all, that means me, that means you, that means we all stumble. So have anybody here messed up? Mm-hmm. So we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. So you messed up. You shouldn't have said something you did, but you did. And so now what? Rub your nose in it. If you don't stumble, you're able to keep your whole body. If you were here Wednesday night, there was this, the whole passage about your words and how we put bits in horses mouth and all that. We're not going to go there this morning. But I just want you to see this, that we all stumble. I think it's easy to miss and forget that part when we're in the middle of something. Like... It's so funny, but um, I don't know, this may, 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 not, may sound inappropriate, but um, when you have young boys growing up in a house, um, tooting happens. You know what tooting is? You know? <laughs> well, there came a time not too long ago when uh, I had to explain to my boys that girls toot too, because we don't have any girls in our family. And they're like, they do? <laughs> girls toot. Guys too. In other words, they, they, they thought all of their lives that girls are just beautiful and smell like perfume. I said, boys, you're going to have a rude awakening. <laughs> girls too, too. And, <clears throat> but again, uh, we, we, we think sometimes like uh, we don't all stumble. We don't, like everybody has stink is what I'm trying to say. Everybody. Proverbs 18, 21, it says, uh, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So, you know, one of the greatest ways to lead my life and in, in, in lead to life and to walk in love is that I would say about love that's in me. The Bible says that uh, if you're born again, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. If you would say this, if life and death are in the power of the tongue and you want to lead to life and you don't want what you're working on to die, then you would say, I am patient. I am kind. I was going to title this, this morning's message, uh, Declare a Thing. And that is, I am patient. I am kind. I don't count. I rejoice in the truth. I, you would say, because you're leading your, your life to life. You're leading what you're a part of, and you're guarding life there. Because you would say about love, this is who you are. I'm just so tired and so sick and tired of your Nope, nope, I'm patient. I am. And I'm not trying, I'm trying. No, I hope. Man, I got a picture of good in my heart. I'm filled with hope today. Well, they always, no, no. 
You change and you lead to life with, through, through your tongue. Let's go on to uh, Psalms. Psalms 133, 1 through 3. This is really the point, uh, ultimately, of, of my message this morning. Maybe you've read this. Maybe you've heard this, uh, talking about unity in the house. It's, it, this is, it, I want to describe uh, what's happening in, in Psalms 133 before we get there. There was two kingdoms in Israel. There was a northern kingdom. There was a southern kingdom. There was uh, Judah, right? Uh, there, were, there was two kingdoms. But this, this, this is written in a time where you have two kingdoms, but yet one God. Both are, of, is, are Jewish, but you have two, they're, it's a divided kingdom. So there's two separate kings. And there's, it's kind of like this warring for who's right, or who, even in Samaritans, it's kind of a picture of that, where they moved to Samaritan, where they married within, and they get let go of some of the Jewish tradition. So you kind of almost have three kingdoms, even though one's a mixed breed. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We have this kingdom that's divided, but here now there's this psalm talking about how good and pleasant it is when the north and the king, north and the south come together to worship one God. Like, like there's a restoring of brothers. It says this, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Maybe your translation says brothers in unity. There's this picture of two kingdoms that yet they were brothers. They were, they're related and they're divided. The kingdom of God on this earth, what God is doing, he's doing through one body. The body of Christ, though there's many parts of that one body. He's doing through one body. And it's important that the body, not just this house, but the body, but and this house. It seems like some of the worst stuff that goes on in a church isn't this church versus that church. It's within a church, where, within a brother where there's a connection that's really tight, but that connection gets a schism and it gets, a, it gets, a, it gets cut. And so then there's no flow there. The valve gets shut off. The walls go up. The... But he says this. He says, how good and pleasant it is. Like it, 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 it tastes good. It's right. It, it, the way that these two words, good and pleasant, it's like, oh, yeah, that tastes good. But not only is, does that taste good, look good, feel good, smell good. It's like talking about the senses here. That that's how the apple's supposed to look. Not only does it, but, but it's pleasant. It's, oh, it's just a right on time. It's kind of like when my wife comes home from Sam's Club with green grapes. When they're hard and crunchy and sweet, it's like, that's good. But it's also pleasant to walk in and be like, oh, she got grapes, you know? And just like the container goes, shh, gone. Next verse. It said, how, oh, let me go back. I didn't see the end of that verse. So it says, how good it is, how pleasant it is when they dwell together in unity. Uh, one translation uh, uh, the BSB, it says harmony. If you were to look that up, it just means unitedness. Unitedness. In other words, unit. One. Unit. Unitedness. That there is one. How good and pleasant it is when the brothers, they recognize that that's my body. And who here takes a hammer and hits their thumb on purpose? Nobody. But we would recognize, he said, that's good when we recognize. It's good when we know that, 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 that what I do unto them, I'm actually doing unto me. You hear that thing, do unto them as you would have others do unto you. Well, can I tell you, you're, you're doing it unto you. You are doing it unto you. If, as the body of Christ, when you do something unto them, you are doing it unto you. Because the eye and the hand, they're connected. It said the next verse. So, Dwell together in unity. It's, it's like, and this is where I want to spend some time this morning, is, is, is looking at what it's like. What it's like. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. I, I want to, it's like precious oil. What does that even mean? What, what, is the, what does that even mean? We dump oil on somebody and it runs all over them? Well, what would happen is, is when an oil is a representation, you'll see in the Old Testament and in the New, it's a representation of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God resting upon one. So when a priest or a king would take office, the Bible talks about how the Spirit would rest on a king. They would anoint him and that would be a sign that the 
Spirit of God would rest upon them. When Aaron became the first priest, he, they, they dumped oil, uh, anointing oil, sacred oil, precious oil upon him, and, and they dumped it, and it was so much ran upon him that it went down his beard all the way down to the, to the, to the feet of his garment. He was sta- would have been standing in a pool of oil or completely clothed with the Spirit of God. A king would be completely clothed with the Spirit of God. This is what this picture of, and it says running down. It would, running down means this, descending from above. That's that word. In this passage of Psalms 133, there's only three, time, three verses in this, in this passage, 133, and he uses this word from above, from above, from above. So he says, let's put it where it says running down. The, the, this word in the Hebrew just means descending from above. So it's like precious oil on the head descending from above upon his beard. From above. Think of heavens. From above on Aaron's beard down to the collar of his robe. All the way. Clothed like heaven. Just all the way. Let's go to the next verse. It says, It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling. Again, this is descending from above. Descending from above on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. I want to go back to verse 2, and I want to just talk a little bit, just for a moment, get a word picture into your, into your mind about the anointing oil. When, when somebody was anointed, Acts 10.38, how Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God. Have you ever heard this verse? Jesus of Nazareth, he was poured on by God. But see, when you anointed somebody, and it would, it, what, they didn't just take a bottle or a vial of oil and just dump it on somebody's head. When you anointed somebody with oil, you'd take that bottle and you'd place it upon your hands. And, and as you dumped it, you would take your hand and you would rub it upon them. So you would rub it upon their face. This actually means to put, to put hand on or to rub upon. So I want you to think about this, Acts 10.38, where it says how God uh, anointed Jesus. He put his hand upon Jesus. This is what happened when you uh, anointed. When Jesus was anointed, it, God actually put his hand upon Jesus. This is the, if you look up this verse, and you, everywhere you look and you see how God anointed, you look up the word anointed, it's actually God's hand rubbing on how God, when God, or if somebody else anointed somebody, if I was to anoint you with oil, I wouldn't just come over there and do this. You would see, maybe we would do this, and then we would rub it up on you. If you were to say this, man, that service was anointed, what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, man, the, man that, that, that song was so anointed. What does that mean? You gave you goosebumps? If you were to say the service was so anointed today, what does that mean? That we didn't miss a stroke on the keys and we got out on time? Like, what does it mean? What you're trying to express, why you and I struggle to explain anointed, is that God's hand was on that service in a special way. When, they, when you would say that person is anointed, you would say God's hand's on that person. That's actually what it means. And so it says that you want God's hand. It says where, where there's unity and unitedness, God's hand is on that people. So think about this. You want God's hand on a house that you're a part of? In your house and in this house, you want God's hand on you. You want God's hand. There's something about, like, you ever just have your dad grab the other end? You can't get the jar. You can't get the, the log. You can't get, but then you just bring it to your dad's hand, and he can make it go through and just pops the lid or just, he does it because his hands are stronger than your hands. Can I tell you, his strong, his hands are stronger than my hand? And when you and I are walking in love, his plan, my part, unitedness, God's hand is on a people. God's hand is upon a people. I want, I crave, we need God's hand upon this people. Can you just imagine what God wants to do here on this earth? And he, can, he says, because of the unitedness, my hand is there. It goes on to say in verse 3, it says, it's like the dew. It's like the dew of Mount Hermon. What is dew anyways? It's vapor, it's moisture, but it's not just vapor. It's vapor that moved into actually condensation or water. 
It says, it's like the dew of Mount Hermon where we're falling on Mount Zion. It says, in that place where there's unitedness, there is a hand uh, upon the people, God's hand. But it's not only a hand upon the people, there's a condition. Because what is, it, what is dew point? Dew point is the temperature of the air at which it no longer can hold water. It no longer can hold all that heaven has. Where's dew? Where is the dew before it comes onto your car seat or your windows or your toys that got left out in the yard or your side-by-side seat or your tractor seat and you get the wet hiney? Where is that moisture before it landed on the seat? Somebody. From above. So it was there the whole time, but the conditions had to rewrite so that it could rest. The conditions for God to rest, it's like dew. There is a point at which it's what he has available and what he wants to do in and through a people is brought about. It's, it cannot hold it anymore. It's just too heavy when what? When there's a unitedness. When there's a oneness. When there's a togetherness. And that togetherness is your and my part, and that your and my part is love. And we walk in love when we, when we understand, I only know in part, but I know my part. I only know in part, but I know, I know my part. And so my words, the words of my mouth, are so, so, so important. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life, let me say this this way, unity or not unity is in the power of the tongue. We talk about how we curse something and we, 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 we our words matter. Let me show you here. Uh, let me show you this, Acts chapter 2. This is the story of the day of Pentecost. It says this, it says, um, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And then suddenly, so they're all together in one place, only 120, not 500. So some had to go. Some went. Can you imagine all these people waiting on the Lord to wait here in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit come? Everybody had an opinion on how he was going to come, but nobody knew. Why do you think 380 of them left? Why was there the, 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 that would be called division, right? They left. Why did they leave? Because there was a different way. They didn't, we weren't doing it the right way. But it says when 120 of them were there in one place, suddenly they were all together. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from where? It came from heaven. This is a really interesting facet right here, a little piece of the story. Can you imagine that it wasn't like it just entered the room? It says it came from heaven. Like, in other words, they recognized, like, it wasn't just like earthquake. It wasn't just the walls outside. It was very, they were very aware that it came from above. It, came, it descended from above, just kind of like the, the, the oil, the hand. This is my beloved, came down from heaven. This is my beloved son, how God anointed Jesus. He just put his hand down on that place. Could God just put his hand down upon this place? He can. He wants to. It's his will. But there's a point. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a time or there's a condition for God to put his hand on something. And that is love. A place united. A place in unity. It goes on to say, it says, there was a sound of heaven filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Them. I just wanted to highlight the them. It wasn't just one man. It wasn't just, oh, that's the one that's anointed. No, it's everyone is preaching Jesus. Everywhere, every day, you, are, uh, you carry a, a call. You carry a part. You know your part. And that part is love. Genesis chapter 11, 1 through 9, I want you to see how important and how connected our words are in keeping the unity. 
And I would say it this way, not just keeping unity, but, keep, but, but being aware of God putting his hand on a place. In your marriage, you, in your, with your kids, um, you could make a statement that you didn't mean anything bad by, but if it's not received in love, but instead it's counted as dad or mom was saying something mean, hey, where were you at? Well, why are you asking me where I was at? Do you not trust me? Uh, no, I was just wondering what was up. I was going to see what, how your day went and how, like, where, where were you? Or, hey, where are you? Well, why are you asking where I'm at? Because I need chips from Dollar General. I was just going to check and see real quick if you're almost home. Oh. So I could hear a word not in love, and that brings a divide. Our words are so tied. I could say something. You could say something. We could say something. And I could hear something that was intended. You don't even know, but my, my part is what? What's your part? Love. love. Genesis 11, 1 through 9, it says, Now the whole world had one language and, and a common form of speech. And as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there, and they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. So they used bricks instead of stone and tar instead of mortar. Come, they said, let us build for ourselves, underline circles, exclamation mark, a city, for ourselves, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, that we may make a name for ourselves. See, this is, if you go back to Psalms 133, and you re- remember that there was two kingdoms, but one Lord. So they're, they're coming together, and what they could unite around wasn't, I have this king, and you have this king. I'm right here, and you're right there. It's our, no, they united around the one thing, the one king the Lord. You know why you and I are here today? Because we like green arrows? Mm -mm. No, because we have the same Lord. There's one. Uh, You might believe in this. You might believe that. You might believe this. You might believe that. But what do we unite around? Jesus. That's what we unite around. That is the place that God can United as he can come down and put his hand on a place. Because you're there, what? To hear from him, to meet with him, to bring him glory, to bring him honor. When we come together, when we go in, when we go out, it is for a name for ourselves? No. It's for him, for his name, to be glorified. And so they, it goes on in verse, um, four, uh, verse 4, it says, and, and not to be scattered over the face of the earth, verse 5. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the sons of men were building. And the Lord said, if they had begun uh, to do this, uh, <clears throat> this as one people speaking the same language, nothing they devise will be uh, beyond them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand another speech. So the Lord scattered them from the, their own. How did they scatter? Words. The Lord scattered them, but words scattered them. They no longer could understand. They were, their words were confused. I, I said, hey, what's for dinner? And you heard, hey, why haven't you cooked dinner? They were confused. This is how the, this is how the enemy works. Or they weren't just confused. There was a stumbling. There, this was a stumbling block. Words matter. Words matter. My part, your part, no matter the words, no matter if it was intended to hurt me, what's my part? Well, that, like, I know that you're saying that, Pastor, but, like, I think that they wrote that turn the other cheek verse that was, that really wasn't supposed to, that wasn't in the original Greek. (laughs) I mean, like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, Love your enemies. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. It was to love those that as a friend on Facebook that doesn't say something you agree with. Not truly your enemies. You ever had, do we know what an enemy really is? They're actually trying to hurt you. And you're to love them? I don't know if you've been like actually wronged lately, like where you just know that you're wronged and you know that it was intentionally devised to hurt you and you got to choose love. Mm -hmm. That's your part. His plan, your part, my part, love. Wow. Wow. 
Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. So here's what he says. And then we're going to do a little bit of declaring here this morning. I'm just going to agree. I declare a thing like I'm, I'm patient. I'm kind. I mean, how, how many of you would love to be able to say that not just about yourself but about your spouse? They're kind. They're, they're, they're patient. You're, or your friend. Like, but it would, how cool is it that we're going to be saying that and declaring that? And not only just declaring about ourselves but declaring that about them. Okay, here we are, Ephesians, 1, 1, Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. As a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you, so Paul's telling them, he's a prisoner at this point, I urge you to walk in a, a manner worthy of the calling you have received. You have a calling. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in, in love. Bearing with one another. That means it's heavy. It's hard. I've been carrying the bucket of corn for a long time. I, there's a story. I had this spot on this piece of property, 160 acres. I thought the deer stand was like right there, but it wasn't. And so we took this back way, and, and my buddy here that's just sitting in the front row, he had the bucket of corn, a full five-gallon bucket. And we proceeded to walk a, about a mile and a half, and he had the whole bucket of corn the whole time switching arms. And I'm like, you still have that corn? Anyway. He was bearing with us. I had, the, I had the camera card, though. So I told him, like, hey, listen, we're all carrying something. <laughs> you know, he was bearing with me in love with diligence to preserve the unity. Isn't that interesting? He says, I, here's what I'm asking you, you. I'm asking you to bear with one, or, one another in love to preserve the unity, to keep the unity of the Spirit. Hmm. The Spirit of God, the hand of God upon something. That's, you're telling me that unity allows the Spirit to come and make things whole? You know, this is the cool thing about do. No matter who's in here, it rests upon, it rests upon your stuff. When the do hits, your car, anything, your drill that got left out, anything that got left out, guess what? The do rested on that. The Holy Ghost rested on that. The hand of God rested upon that. So you could have a marriage that's going through stuff. You could have a business that needs some help. You could have all kinds of things. You could have a body that's needing a touch from above. You could have all kinds of things that are just needing a touch from above. But because, because you're there, because you're in a place of unity, a unitedness, because you have fought to, and made every effort to be and play your part and keep the bond of love, He's t- he's t- that dude's just fallen. Yeah. That dude's just fallen. When you have that choice, whether or not to keep a bond uh, of the, the love, the, to keep that love, make every effort to keep the, the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. It goes on to say this. Um, there is one body. Again, this is, goes back to that, that Psalms 133. How many? There was one king. There was one. That's where they came around. This is where they united. One body. One spirit, just as we're all called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all. So there's there's just one who is over all and through all. Wow, there's just one. So Paul is having to bring this encouragement and correction and saying, hey, fight to keep the unity so that God can... Put his hand on this church. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through uh, 18. I appeal to you now, brothers. And it's interesting. He says, I appeal to you. Both times he's like, guys, listen. Listen. He says, I appeal to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree together so that there may be no divisions among you that you may be united in mind and conviction. It sounds just like what we were talking about in 1 Corinthians or in uh, Psalms 133 and then in Ephesians and now here we are in Corinthians. It must be something that we need to hear. It's doctrine is what it is. A doctrine of love. He said, let there be, uh," he goes, let me start back at verse 10. I appeal to you brothers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree together so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be united in mind and conviction. Verse 11. My brothers... Some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. Individuals among you are saying, I follow Paul. 
The other one says, well, I follow Apollos. Well, I believe Cephas is the one. Or, y'all, you don't have it right. I follow Jesus, okay? Is Christ divided? Verse 13, was, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I, I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except uh, Crispus and, and Gaius, so no one can say that they were baptized in Paul's name or in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else, but here's what I'm trying to get the point across, verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of wisdom, lest, it sh- lest the cross of Christ should be emptied of its power. For the message of the the message of the cross is, is that's what it's foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us it is the power of God. So the message of the cross is the power of God. Well, I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Paul, and I'm of this guy, and I'm of this guy. Well, I believe this, and I believe that. Well, I was baptized this way and this way at this river. And so I, he's like, y'all, y'all, you, you, we're missing the point. It's the cross that's the power of God. It's the cross that saved you and me. It's his grace that saved me. My, the same grace that touched my life. Touched his life, touched her life, touched your life. The same God, the same grace, the same cross paid the price for all. Whew, that's easy to get united around that, isn't it? Christ, the cross. John 13, 34 through 35, he says, Now I'm going to give you a new commandment. That I, and I give you this, love one another if I have loved you. So you also must, this is not a choice, this is a command, you must love one another. He says, by this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. What do you think would be the, is it your love that makes people know that it, know him? Or is it the fact that you're my love causes the tipping point, or let me say it this way, the dew point, that which is been God's plan all along for it just to fall upon a people. I think it's not just, well, I, I, didn't count, I didn't say anything bad about you, and you didn't say anything bad about me, and so we're just like here. No, no, it's the unitedness that causes and allows the hand to be set down upon running down, or the dew, or the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, His power, His presence, to rest upon a people. Unitedness, love. So he says, love one another because this love will keep the unity. And the unity is the conditions. It's when the conditions are right for God to fall in a place. Can I tell you why? Uh, the Bible says where there's many words, there's much sin. And where, here's where we're at in this day and age. There's words everywhere. You want to you wanna get less words? Stay off of Facebook. You, you won't struggle to find out, well, how come you didn't go to that funeral? I didn't even know there was a funeral or wasn't a funeral or this. You, I had no clue because I didn't know about it. I didn't, but where there's lots of words, there's the, well, they, didn't, they, they knew and they just didn't come because they don't like me. What? Like there's, there's all kinds of words that cause people to what? To stumble and, and, and to be divided. That's not God's plan. What's God's best is that we would love and that we would fight for to stay in unity, that we would recognize he has a plan and our part is love. I only see in part, but I know my part, which is love. love. Galatians 5, 6, it says for this, it says for in Christ, it, neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. You Listen, you got to be this way. No, you got to be this way. No, you got to believe this. No, you got to believe this. Well, actually, it means this. No, no, he said, none of this matters. What matters? Only thing that counts, the only thing that counts is faith that expresses itself. Wow, that's amazing. It kind of sounds like 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. The only thing that counts is that you and I would express our faith through love. Because that's when God can move and not man move. 
I'm just done with just like trying to have a man move. You know, like let's have God move. Let's play my part. There was a, me- a message. Ev, throw me my phone. I wanted to. Actually, Landon sent last night. I thought it was really good. Uh, not that he sends stuff that's not good, but it just was really good and fitting uh, in, in light of what today's message is going to be. It says this Well done, my good and faithful pastor, crossed out. Bishop, crossed out. Evangelist, crossed out. Apostle, crossed out. Preacher, crossed out. Missionary, Crossed out. Teacher? Crossed out. Singer? Crossed out. Worship leader? Crossed out. Servant? Well done, my good and faithful servant. His plan? Your part? Your part? Your part? Your part? Your part? My part? Our part? So he can do his part. When I play my part, when you play your part or do not play but do our part, God can have and do his part. That's what, we, that's what the world is craving. They're looking to see, is there really a God? Is this message of good news, could it really be true? Because it sure doesn't look like it. They look like the rest of us. But I got a part to play. You got a part to play. What's that part? Love. As a son in the house of mom and dad, you got a part to play. My sons have a part to play. Not just in this house, but in my house. You, as a, you have a part to play. In your house, in your marriage, you have a part to play. God's hand can come down and touch your marriage if you'll choose to play and to walk in your part. Love of God, better than any phileo. Better than any uh, kind of man's love, the love of God in the marriage. (laughs) You talk about, I'll cut your grass. You talk about God being in the middle of something. It's like, it it just, it's not just, uh, it's not just a physical love. It's enjoying one another. You know, when we come together, we should just enjoy being together. Why? It's not like, here, how soon can I get here and how soon can I leave? Or how late can I get here and how soon can I leave? Why? Because God called us to play a part. He joined us in a place. Man, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 6 through 8. Remember this. That God raised us up. He raised us up. He raised you up. You know, one day God's going to say, see that Drew over there? I raised him up. To show how good my mercy was. (laughs) No kidding. And he goes, yeah, you see that guy right there? I raised him up too. So I could show you how great my mercy and my kindness and my forgiveness was. Wow. You see that girl over there? See all that? Because see, right now we know in part. But one day we're going to know everything open and clear. And you know what we're going to say? Wow, God. How great. Because I'm going to see that I missed it. And I'm going to see that you missed it. And I'm going to see that we missed it. And I'm going to see that he did it. And I'm going to see that he did it. And then when we come together, we're going to, we come and we rally around a unitedness of just, God, we're here. We worship you. Will you come, band? We worship you. We. It's not I, not just I. Oh, I worship you because I believe in Jesus and you believe and we're baptized by Apollos. You got saved at the Presbyterian Church, and I was saved at the Baptist. No. Jesus came. He says this, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages, Ephesians 2, 7, in order that in the coming ages he might put on display the surpassing riches of his grace demonstrated by his mercy and kindness toward us in Christ. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. One for you, one for you, one for you. Jesus for you, Jesus for you, Jesus for you, Jesus for you. People outside, hey, Jesus for you. Jesus for you. Jesus Jesus for you. 
I don't know what to say. I don't know how to preach the gospel. <laughs> Jesus for you. He came for me. He came for you. He paid the price. Would you receive Jesus? But when, how can I be about that message when I'm so busy about making a name for myself or building a tower for myself? Or being so concerned about what you did to myself. See, that's where love struggles. Is when its eyes are turned inward instead of outward. That's when I struggle to be generous. When my eyes are turned inward instead of outward. You know, we read all about love, but I just, this is kind of the, thing just popped up in my heart as, as a mo- motivation and, and an application this, this week. The Bible says that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he did something. He gave. You can only give when your eyes are looking out instead of in. This is what it looks like to love somebody. Generous. Find a way to be generous and let it be known that it, there's none good. That love, that generosity, that goodness didn't come from you. It originated from him. Last verse. Hmm. Romans 5, 5. Romans 5, 5. It says that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to strive for this love, if you've been born again, the Bible says that his love, has got, hope does not put to shame because God's love has been poured out. It's been poured out like, like, like oil that's poured out. Can I tell you there's a deposit that's from above? We put love in you. Can you when, when you were touched by God, he just came down and said, and it says that you were actually sealed or marked. He, he put his hand upon you and said, this one's mine. That one's mine. When you get born again, he, he says, that one's mine. Hey, and he's mine. And, and, and she's mine. She's mine. Yep. No, no, no. You thought you could. That's mine too. That's what's happening here. God's love has been poured out or poured down and put into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. And so the love of God's in you. The love of God's in me. All we have to do is yield to it and begin to, and, and if I'm going to not just yield to it, but walk with it, I'm going to use my, the words of my mouth to declare, I am what love is. I am patient. I am kind. I, I don't yield to suffered wrongs. I don't count or keep a track of memory. Let's stand this morning. And we're going to close this, uh, this morning uh, with a we worship you. Not just a I worship, but a we worship. Yeah. And just I just I pray that's just a word picture. Lord, rest on this place. Like the dew point when the water becomes too heavy, the conditions and the temperatures just right to where no longer what's up here can just stay here. It has to rest. It's unitedness. Lord, rest in this place. Would you just uh, say with me what love is in you? I am patient. I am kind. I don't envy. I don't boast. I'm not proud. I don't devalue others. I don't seek my own. I don't get angry easily. I don't keep a record. You can't wrong me. I delight in the truth. I protect, I trust, I hope, and I persevere. The love of God is in me, and my part is to love. God, I'll do my part so you can do your part. In my marriage, in my family, Lord, in this church, Thank you. 
in Jesus' name. We're going to close this morning's service by singing this song. If you're here this morning, I'm going to, while well, we're singing, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you say, I want to give Jesus my life this morning. I want you just to come on down to the front, and I'd love to pray with you to rededicate your life or just give your life to Jesus, Any, or you, you need healing in your body, whatever it might be. And just as we sing this song and worship the Lord uh, before we're dismissed. We worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. We worship you, O oh Prince of Peace. That is what we want to do. Who oh, we give you praise for you are our righteousness. come, every time we come, I want you to come with this in mind, the part that you play so that God can rest in this place. Amen? He rest on not just this place, but on a people. And so, Father, we just thank you. Even, you know, we said this, we said this, and I've shared, shared this a number of times. Um, a, a, a spiritual father to me uh, a father shows you how to change the oil or shows you some things you don't know. And I had asked him, I said, what do you, um, what, what could I know spiritually? He said, just say this, hey, I received the anointing before you minister. So when you say that, and I said, you know, you need the anointing to be a father, to be a mother, to be a husband, to be a wife, to be a son, to be an employee, to be whatever it is God's called. Lord, I just thank you for the anointing. Here's what you're saying is, God, put your hand on me today. Do with me business Lord, I just received the anointing. And you just be aware of his hand on you. To, uh, uh, and so we're just going to just, before we go, that just uh, as you go to today, uh, and as we go beyond these four walls to preach Jesus and to, to love people, just let's be aware of his hand. Let's just say that with me. Father, today I receive the anointing that you would put your hand upon me just as you would dump oil on a priest or a king that your spirit would rest upon me and your hand would go with me in Jesus name amen, amen, amen God bless you guys as you go we'll see you for Tuesday night of prayer otherwise Wednesday uh, back in the house, amen God bless you